Hi everyone, my name is Amitish and in this video we're going to master that limit over there which involves a square root and it's going to be a 0 over 0 limit so it's an indeterminate form and we're going to talk through the step-by-step -step process to master these kinds of limits involving one simple trick. And this is a limit that's appeared multiple times in exams at Princeton University or similar style kinds of limits when I've taught freshman calculus. So mastering this limit will be very important. So let's just dive right into it. So the first step when you have a limit as x goes to 3 of something is to just plug in what happens at x equals 3. And as I alluded to with the 0 over 0, let's just make sure that it really is 0 over 0. Okay, so the first thing is just to plug in. So when x is equal to 3, what we're going to get is we're going to get the square root of 3 plus 1 minus 2, which is the square root of 4 minus 2, which is 0. So we've got 0 here. And in the bottom, we've got 3 minus 3, which is going to also equal to 0. So it's going to be a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, which means that, well, basically with limits, we don't care what is happening exactly at 3. It's a limit. So what we care about is what happens when x approaches 3. And just because it's 0 over 0 at 3 doesn't mean that as it approaches 3, it's going to not approach something meaningful. And that's our goal to figure out what that is. So the trick with this kind of limit is, generally speaking, I've done videos on limits. Check them out on my channel. Links are in the description. Um, generally speaking, you know, if you had a quadratic at the top and it was 0 at x equals 3, you could factor an x minus 3 from top and bottom, cancel it off, and get rid of the 0 over 0, right? Because the 0 at the bottom would go away if you could cancel an x minus 3 from top and bottom. The issue here is that you have a square root, so it's not so clear what to cancel. And in fact, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to multiply top and bottom by something to make life easy. And it's going to be motivated by the following observation. So it's a cool creative mathematical trick. And it's motivated by the following observation. It's a difference of squares formula that a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times a plus b. Now the point here is that if you have this numerator, you have a square root, we want to get rid of the square root, okay? And we want to get rid of the square root by multiplying something on top and bottom. So that's just multiplying by 1. If you're multiplying by the same thing on top and bottom, you're multiplying by 1. So if we think about this formula, if we imagine the a and b to be root x plus 1 and minus and 2, then what we get is that if you just take, you know, root x plus 1 minus 2 times root x plus 1 plus 2, okay, so it's an a minus b times a plus b kind of style, then what we're going to get is we're going to get the square root of x plus 1 squared minus 2 squared, okay, which is going to equal to x plus 1 minus 4. Okay, so we have successfully eliminated the square root, and this is the trick. It's called multiplying by the conjugate. So this is just going to equal to x minus 3. And this is kind of the, the beauty here that we can now cancel off the x minus 3 from the top and bottom. So let's actually get into what it is. So this is called multiplying by the conjugate. So I'm going to now show you the step-by-step -step process here. So the step-by-step -step process is the first equality is we multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. So we get root x plus 1 minus 2 times root x plus 1 plus 2 divided by x minus 3 times root x plus 1 plus 2. Now keep in mind here that we have multiplied the same thing on top and bottom, right? This is crucial. You can't just multiply on top and forget about the bottom because then you're finding a different limit altogether. You have to multiply by the same thing on top and bottom, so that's just multiplying top and bottom by 1 basically. I mean multiplying the whole thing by 1. So now what we can do is we know the top. Right? We know we get the x minus 3, so this is called multiplying by the conjugate. Okay? So I'll, I'll write it this way, multiplying by the conjugate. Um, so here when you flip the minus sign to a plus sign and you take root x plus 1 plus 2, that's called the conjugate of root x plus 1 minus 2. So these two are conjugates of each other. Okay? So this is always the trick with the radical to multiply by the conjugate to get rid of it when you have a 0 over 0 limit. Now what we can do is we can take limit x goes to 3 of we know that's x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 2. And now you see what's happening. It's the same idea in previous limits we've seen, you know, when you have a quadratic on top and an x minus 3 on bottom and it's 0 over 0, you can cancel an x minus 3. Well, now by multiplying top and bottom by conjugate of, a, of, of the radical um, expression on the numerator, we can cancel off the x minus 3 on top and bottom. And here it's crucial, okay? This is still a 0 over 0 limit. But 
what happens is when you take limit x goes to 3, you don't care about the value at 3, only near 3. And near 3, x minus 3 is non-zero. Okay, it may be very small, but it is non-zero. So you can cancel that off for that reason. And now we're going to get limit x goes to 3 of 1 over the root of x plus 1 plus 2. Okay, and now the point is it is no longer a 0 over 0 limit. The culprit was the x minus 3, right? So typically with 0 over 0 limits involving polynomials or radicals, you know, I always like to think of a culprit, which is some kind of thing, like if it's limit x approaches 3, it's an x minus 3. You try to cancel it off to get something that is not 0 over 0 anymore. Um, and now what you do is you find this, and you can say that this is equal. So what's this going to equal to? So the limit is just going to equal to um, plug in x equals 3. Okay, So you can plug in now. You don't get 0 over 0 anymore. It's going to be the square root of 3 plus 1 plus 2. And of course, the square root of 3 plus 1 is the square root of 4, which is 2. So it's going to be 1 fourth. Okay, so that's going to be the final answer for this limit. And this is kind of another, it's a beautiful example, right? So it's a beautiful example where something that looks kind of, it's zero over zero, it actually turns out to be one fourth. And this is why I keep emphasizing, you know, zero over zero is an indeterminate form because once you go through the calculation, just because you plug in it is zero over zero, you know, it could end up being any number. And indeterminate form means that, you know, it could end up being any number and you have to do the work to find out what that is. And in this case, you can say that this function that we started off with is the same as this function that we ended up here, as long as x is not equal to 3. Because this function here is undefined when x is 3, and this function is defined when x is 3. Okay, so it turns out that they are the same as long as x is not 3. That 1 fourth is a limit. And if you want to graph it, which I won't do in this video, but you can do that, it's going to be a hole at x equals to 3, okay? So a hole is when the limit exists, but the function is undefined at the point. So this function here, its limit as x goes to 3 exists and is 1 fourth, but the function itself is undefined. So whatever the graph is, you know, you'd have, like if you're trying to graph this function, I can sort of, um, I've done, done videos on it. So check out my other videos on limits and, you know, in general math on my channel. And please like and subscribe if you watch this far. It means so much to me if you've watched this far and it really helps support my vision of giving infinite free accessible math education to everyone. And who doesn't want that, right? So please subscribe and support me and also have infinite access to infinite math content. But a hole is something in the graph that looks something like this, right? It doesn't matter what the graph is, but it's just undefined at that point. So we draw a hole. And here you'd say there is a hole at, I haven't, I mean, this graph is not representative of the graph, okay? I've just kind of drawn some squiggly line, but you would say that there's a hole at 3 comma 1 fourth, okay? Because at, at the point um, x equals 3, it's undefined, but its limit is 1 fourth, so there's a hole, but the rest of the graph will be some nice continuous graph. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. I hope that gave you a mastery of how to solve these kinds of problems. It wouldn't matter if the radical expression was on the denominator or numerator. If it's 0 over 0, multiply by the conjugate, which just means swapping the minus sign for a plus sign, and there, there you will have the, the answer that way. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you loved that video. Um, please check out all the channel on my content. As I said, I'm creating infinite free accessible math education and spread the word to friends and family and just enjoy my videos and leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear, you know, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, feedback, I'd love to hear from you. It would mean a lot to me and I'm super excited to see you in the next video. Wish you all the best and please take care.